Welcome to stage four of the Alpari World Match Racing Tour. The Chicago Match Cup is a brand new event and as a city that sports mad, it's the perfect choice of venue for the only US stop on the tour. Chicago is the third most popular city in the United States and it's not hard to see why. Its bustling streets are filled with dozens of museums, art galleries, shops and restaurants, leaving the tourists that flock here spoilt for choice. Of course, you can't come to Chicago without getting caught up in the sporting frenzy. Be it hockey, baseball, basketball or soccer, there's something for every sports enthusiast. Chicago's iconic skyline boasts world-class architecture, whilst the city also offers luscious green parks and lakeside beaches to relax on. But this is no time to unwind for our match racers. They've arrived straight from a week's intense sailing at the Stena Match Cup in Sweden. The Chicago Match Cup is the fourth of eight events across the globe. Hosted at the Chicago Match Race Center, the 12 teams will be competing in Tom 28 boats as they battle it out for the 100,000 US dollar prize purse. Match racing is the most gladiatorial sailing discipline. It pits two boats against each other on a very short race course. The two teams battle for advantage during a four minute period before the start gun, then sail upwind to the top mark where they hoist spinnakers. Turning back downwind onto the run to the lured mark, the spinnakers must be dropped for the second lap. The races usually last two or sometimes three laps and the action is umpired on the water using a system of flags each boat is assigned a color, either blue or yellow, and the sailors raise a red and yellow flag to protest if they think their opponent has broken a rule. The umpires announce their decision, raising the appropriate blue or yellow flag to signify the boat that has offended. If a red flag is raised as well, it means the infringement is more severe and the penalty, turning the boat through three quarters of a circle, must be taken immediately. Otherwise, the penalty can be taken any time before the finish. The first to cross the finish line is the winner. As we enter the halfway stage of the Alpari World Match Racing Tour, the need for points is growing. Bjorn Hansen has managed to keep himself at the top of the tour leaderboard, but he's followed closely by Peter Gilmore. Surprisingly, reigning world champion Ian Williams has yet to win an event, but has still managed to hang on to third place. Sitting in fourth and sixth place, respectively, are the possible favourites for this event, Phil Robertson and Keith Swinton. So why have the punters got their money on these young guns? Yeah, well, I think we might have, hold a little advantage here in Chicago. We've been at this event yeah, four times, as I said before, and we've sailed in this specific area three times, which is probably most, more than uh, most of the other teams here. It's going to be really aggressive. Yeah, obviously uh, we're the reigning champions of this regatta. Uh, we, we won here last year, um, so um, I guess that, that gives us um, a pretty good reputation in these boats. It just really helps 
for the guys to know the kind of the trends of the breeze and what it does. We also won uh, a Grade One event in Spain in these boats earlier in the year, so I think we feel pretty comfortable in these boats, and you know we know how to make them go fast. So. It's a, I guess, a plain piece of paper you could say for all the all the new teams here and. Yeah, I think for us it's, it's something we've seen before. But despite coming into this event as firm favourites, both skippers found themselves sailing for their lives on the last day of qualifying. Um, the top four teams from the round robin, they've gone through straight to the quarterfinals, leaving the remainder of the eight teams fighting for uh, four spots that are left uh, over to get into the quarterfinals. So, you know, everyone uh, is still in the regatta and uh, basically you're going to have to try and get in the top four of this repercharge to get through to the quarterfinals. Bjorn Hansen, Ian Williams, Pierre Antoine Mordan and Taylor Campbell are already safely through to the quarterfinal. Swinton sailed well for the first half of the day, but by his final flight he found himself in a do-or-die situation against Jordan Rees. Well, there you have it, we're on board. Right now with, oh, there's a penalty already. Oh, just to give us something to get our teeth into. We are on board with Jordan Reese and his state market sailing team. Keith Swinton must win this race. He hasn't started very well because he's got a penalty against him already. This is what I call the Crocodile Dundee match. Both of these lads from Australia and they've come through great youth sailing programs. A couple of the young guns of the fleet. No, Jordan Reese. Oh, Reese has got big trouble. Reese is in big trouble here. And that is good for Keith Swinton. Surely that's going to be a penalty. Surely a penalty against. Uh... What? A green flag. Well, I'm amazed. Looked to me like someone was tacking right in front of starboard tack boat. But hey, the umpire said green flag, so who am I to argue, hey? Is there enough room coming down towards the finish? What do you think, Scotty? We think we think not a chance, Andy. We've uh, been discussing it on board the race committee boat. There's about four boat lengths, but he's going to go for it. Spinnaker coming down now. He's got the kite down in time. He jibes onto port because he doesn't want to come out on, onto port. And he's thrown the helm. And he, the boat's clear. And it comes down to the wire. And it's yellow. It's Jordan Reese right at the end takes it over the top and absolute heartbreak for Keith Swinton it was literally only inches in it and I'm not sure if Swinton could have done that penalty any better uh, he did it right on the line but uh, Jordan Reese absolute photo finish a similar battle took place between Johnny Burnson and Laurie Jewelry they both needed a win to scrape through into the quarterfinals in fourth place Laurie Jewelry Sorry, we're on board with uh, Laurie Jury. Burnson tries to roll over the top of Jury. Two, one, and up. What? How's it green? Two, one, down. Two, one, and up. Green flag, no incident, no penalty. Okay. Tacking, tacking. Two boats getting Best very close. Burnson pushing jury. Lorry jury now pushing up. Burnson directly behind. As the gun goes, now, Laurie Jury definitely got the best of that start. On board with Burnson, just didn't quite get slingshot out of the line. 
Looks light out the bottom right. Fury on port. So is Burnson. We're looking Definitely. for Burnson probably to tack back at Laurie Jury, and this will be the What's crucial up? moment when the two boats come back. Three, two, one, and rolling. So, very close race here between Kiwi skipper okay, and the left. Swedish skipper. A little bang off, maybe it's quite light here, guys. Burnson coming downwind. Pressure, lifting a little, getting soft here. Trimming the spinnaker as they come down. It's all about getting maximum boat speed. Dropping in five, three, two, one, drop. On the main. Wait in. Big load weight. Packing two, one, and rolling. Great shots from on board the boats. Two, one, and up. Burnson on two wins, one, so he really up. needs to win this one. If he does, Jury will probably go out. Burnson, yellow spinnaker. Set. Big gain, big lead. On board with Laurie Jury as he goes for his set. But looks like it's too little, too late. He's going to have to find something in these light conditions. He's uh, powering through to the finish with what little breeze there is. And it's going to look pretty comfortable in the end, but it did get light and scary in the middle of the race. And there is the blue flag goes up for Johnny Burnson. A, uh, a good win over Laurie Jury, but uh, it sounds like that that uh, doesn't, still doesn't give uh, Burnson enough points by our calculations. So after a stormy day and some equally turbulent racing, we have our eight quarter finalists. Bjorn Hansen lies at the top of the qualifying leaderboard, followed by Ian Williams, two match racing heavyweights. Pierre-Antoine Morvan qualified in third, Taylor Canfield in fourth, and then Jordan Rees, Phil Robertson, Sally Barkow, and Johnny Burnson make up the last four. Laurie Jury, Simona Ferraresi, Donald Wilson, and Keith Swinton went out before the quarters. With the qualifying stage complete, it was on to the knockout rounds, starting with the quarterfinals. Bjorn Hansen had first pick of opponent and he raced local skipper Sally Barkow. After three flights, Barkow was 2-1 down and desperately needed a win to stay in the competition. The umpires right behind the boats, keeping everything clean and tidy. Time's running down, 25 seconds, but Sally is a little early, it looks like. Probably see Sally tacking away. 
15 seconds to go. Sally tacks onto port. I like what she's doing here. She's keeping a good wrap of speed on. She goes down the line, making sure she's not over. Here we go for the gun. Stand by. There goes the gun. All clear. Good start from Sally on this right-hand side as she tacks immediately onto starboard. Sally Barco tacking around the top mark, but she's copped a red flag penalty, Andy. She uh, tried to put her bow up head to wind on port tack and couldn't quite get there. Went beyond head to wind and she was judged to be tacking boat. So she's going to take her penalty immediately right now. And so you can see the blue and white CME group spinnaker be belonging to Bjorn Hansen playing through. And Barco now dead in the water. Now she hoists. So it was neck and neck coming in. Sally Barco with a small advantage. But Bjorn Hansen, his experience really shining through and uh, playing that one very close to the chest and walking away with a fairly big lead now. Here's Hansen. And Sally Barco very close behind. We're coming in towards the finish. This is going to be a nail biter. It's Sally Barco slightly to lured and she is holding her lured ground. The question will be, can Bjorn Hansen get down to the two boat length circle? Sally puts her bow up for a little bit of boat speed. Bjorn Hansen is clear ahead, but there will be one more jibe. Now, the question is, when does Sally go? And can she roll Bjorn Hansen on the last jibe? So, about a boat length in it now, only 30 yards to go. I think Hansen might have this but it'll only take one spinnaker collapse for Sally Barco to get in there. It's gonna be close. So it's probably about 40 yards to go now. It's gonna be very, very close. Sally Barco right on Hansen's ear. Hansen is gonna be able to soak down into the zone, I believe. Barco jibes away. She's got a little puff. She's coming on strong. It's gonna be close at the finish. I think Hansen's gonna have it. Uh, Sally back onto starboard, but she has to give him room. Can she collapse this kite one last time? Oh. It's going to be very close, but it's too little too late. Up oh. goes the blue flag. Contact. Bjorn Hansen. There was nice a contact. Job. There was a collision between the two boats. What have the umpires got to say about that? If it's a blue flag, it's against Hansen. If it's yellow, it's against Barkow. Oh, it's yellow. Sally Barkow against her. Oh, such disappointment. She is out of this regatta. She's out of the event. Bjorn Hansen goes through to the semi-finals. The next pairing saw Ian Williams fighting it out against Johnny Burnson. We join them for their second race with Williams 1-0 up. This is our feature match. Ian Williams against Johnny Burnson. Ian Williams has won two of the only two races that he's sailed. He only has to win one more to go through to the semi-finals. Now they're coming in for their last run into the start line. Williams looking to roll over the top within one minute now for their final approach. They're only about 25 seconds away from the line. There's Burnson. Oh, that was close. Burnson luffing Williams. What did Williams keep clear? The umpires are going to decide. If there's a yellow flag, it's against Williams. If there's a green flag, no penalty. Look at that choppy, choppy, really bumpy conditions in the starting area with only 25 seconds to go to the start. Burnson has slowed right down. Burnson very slow indeed. Here we go, 15 seconds to go now. Now he's got a little bit more pace on. Williams just going fast down towards the pin end of the line. Seven seconds. Burnson still a little slow. All clear. Burnson got a nice start in the end. Quite favoured to the starboard end, to the committee boat end. Big right hand shift. Yep. 
Well, one interesting thing, Williams has just been given a penalty as they sail upwind, and I wonder whether Williams has been given a penalty for illegal hiking. Action here at the, coming into the bottom mark between Williams and Burnson. They're both getting their spinnakers down. Burnson has just managed to hold on, has he? Two of them rounding each mark. You can go around either of those marks. You just have to go inside to outside. Was there a Y flag? Ooh. Oh, Burnson gets a penalty against him. Now it's even. It's going to be very, very close. We'll uh, we'll see if we can get ahead a little bit for you. But uh, Johnny Burnson really struggling right now. It's going to come down to the last puff, the last wave. Less than a boat length in it. I think it's going to be Johnny Burnson, but Ian Williams right on top of him. Coming into Looking the finish. Looking at the committee boat, blue flag, Johnny Burnson. Benson managed to stay in the game by winning the next race, but it wasn't enough. Williams took a third victory in flight four, sending Johnny Benson home. Next up, young Australian Jordan Rees faced current number five on the tour leaderboard, Pierre-Antoine Morvan. By flight four, the score was 2-1 to the young gun. Rees needed one more win to advance to the semi-finals. Morvan looks like he's in control of this. Reese slowed down heavily. 15 seconds to go to the start. More vans in good shape here. Reese is struggling to get boat speed. There's the gun. More van did nice work and forces Reese to tack away. But here on the commentary team, we like that right-hand side, and that's why Morvan tacks immediately to follow Reese towards the right-hand side. Jordan Reese got ahead of uh, the French team of Morvan. Scotty, what did you see? He is still ahead by five or six boat lengths, doing a very nice job. A little bit of rain on the course right now. Jordan Reese looks like he's going to close this one out. He's 2-1 up. And Morvan from France just looks like he's too far behind. Got about 20 boat lengths to get to the finishing line. The boat's coming together. The blue Sailors for the Sea spinnaker looks like it's just enough ahead. It's going to be close, though. Oh, that's close, close. But Morvan's just behind. It's half a boat length, isn't it? As Jordan Reese comes down towards the finish and the Australians are through to the semi-finals. They take it 3-1. The French team go out. To decide who would be joining Hanson Williams and Reese in the semis, local Taylor Canfield went up against Phil Robertson. The score was 2-1 to Canfield, but could he seal the deal? Yeah, uh, it's very, very close, Andy. Taylor Canfield certainly closed up. Can he get his bow up and around Phil Robertson? He's done it. And it's Canfield around the top mark ahead. Phil Robertson tried to get to him on star, but couldn't quite get there. Canfield ahead by less than a boat length. He hasn't hoisted. He still has that penalty outstanding. So he's trying to, uh, he's got Robertson overlap now. So now we play the down speed game of scrub the penalty. They are around the top mark, but no spinnakers yet. Robertson slowly rolling over the top, but that won't help him unless he can get on to starboard and come back at Canfield. So Canfield really reversing the tables here and uh, creating havoc for uh, the Kiwi team. Andy? Oh, fascinating. Yeah, this could go any way, huh? Because Canfield is luffing. Robertson trying to keep clear. What's Canfield going to do right now? Oh, look at that. He's taken his penalty. And now he's got a hoist. Hoist, hoist, hoist. Canfield hoists just a little late from Robertson. Oh, and it's inside the jib. They didn't want that. 
but the penalty is gone and the black Alpari spinnaker is now filling. The jib's down, the spinnaker's filling and can field. Uh, can he get the boat speed up? Robertson in a, uh, in a controlling position. We're trying to pull up alongside, see if we can get a, a, a better view of it, but very, very close indeed. And I think Canfield might have scrubbed his second penalty. He has, so there must have been an offsetting penalty somewhere. So nice job by Canfield. It's an even horse race. Canfield is not laying the finish line, so he needs to get enough pressure on that side of the course to get down, jibe, and get across Phil Robertson. Right now, I don't think he's able to do that, so I would say Phil Robertson still in control. Robertson back on to starboard. Let's see how it goes this time. Canfield Spinnaker very, very light. He's just trying to keep bow out. And it's a gain to Canfield. He oh. is about two boat lengths clear. And he thinks he can get down to the two boat length circles. So that's a gain to Taylor Canfield. I think the writing's on the wall for the Kiwis. Back to you, Andy. Well, look, listen to that. That is amazing. Taylor Canfield was behind. He caught two penalties. He threw it all away. The local Chicago sailor is 2-1 up right now. If he takes this race, he goes through to the semifinals. This would be a big upset, a huge race. Here we go. The Black Alpari spinnaker, Taylor Canfield, and his team from Chicago, Match Race Center. They are squeezing it down towards the finishing line. One more final jibe in. We are looking for a blue flag if, Can if it's Canfield to win. Look on the race committee boat as they squeeze down to the finish. Blue! Taylor Canfield takes it and is through to the semi-finals. Disappointed Kiwis on board Phil Robertson's boat. Wow, what a race. That was a humdinger. Phil Robertson may be used to the boats, but it wasn't enough. Canfield booked his place in the semis, sending Robertson home. With a mix of seasoned tour card holders and rising stars in the semi-finals, it really could be anyone's game. The semi-finals got underway amongst some testing conditions. The first semi-final pair saw the British skipper Ian Williams racing against Taylor Camfield. The spectators watching from Navy Pier were keen to see if Camfield had it in him to beat the current world champion. By flight three, Williams was in the lead with two wins. He was on the verge of a hat trick and with it, a spot in the finals. We join them in the pre-start with Williams, a penalty down. OK, Williams tacks onto starboard. Here we go, Williams tacking onto starboard. He looks like he's still just ahead of Taylor Canfield, but boy, it's close. Cut, two, 
One and press. My main. Ready? Real long start. Two, one, go hoist. We've got to leave this jive, yeah? I think we might lay down, Bill. I think you will. Okay. Thinking we might be in close to a match now, Bill. What do you think? What's the pressure like to jive? Light over to uh, the right looking up. If he jives, you think we should carry on, do you? I think right now you would. Okay. He's going to get desperate soon. Williams has just squeezed out a bit more of a lead against Taylor Canfield. We need to actually stay slightly hot here. Yeah, we're five high here. So okay, good. Do a twing, please. Nice. Do a twing. Two. One, and press. Come on, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, Williams coming to the bottom mark. Don't worry, just drop it. Drop it. One more round to go. Green mark, yeah? You have a penalty still. Yeah, copy that. I'm thinking if we get a nice bit of pressure, they do it. The He's confirming that they're going to the green mark That's and they've still got a penalty against them. Me. Williams leading it by a long way now. Coming up At least more. a couple of lengths ahead. Just a bit of weight up, guys. Here he goes. Williams doing his penalty. Jibing around. That's the right thing to do. He got to the ley line, did his penalty. Clearly the right time for him to do his penalty. Still well ahead. Got a good lead. Nice one, yeah. The red and white CS spinnaker of it Ian like. Williams. Oh, he's like he's on final approach now. The Cassidy. And uh, there's the yellow nice. flag. Very, very nice. Well done, guys. We're pretty excited to be, you know, amongst the uh, some of the best sailors in the world, and uh, we're here again on the World Match Racing Tour. So uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, competing in more events next year. So Ian Williams made it into the final for the second consecutive event. To decide who'd be joining him, Jordan Rees with the State Masters sailing team raced Bjorn Hansen and his formidable Mechanoman sailing team. It went to a full five flights and we joined them for their decisive match. One minute and five seconds to go. Here comes Hansen. Looks like a pretty big right-hand shift. Looks like a right-hand shift on the breeze. Does that look like it to you? Yeah, I uh, I agree. It is it is a right hand shift. The starting line it was a little pin favoured before. Now I think it's even maybe marginal boat, but even enough that it doesn't really matter. It'll be which side of the course, which puff comes down first. Now I am seeing one left shift coming round the edge of the pier, but again the open water is to the right. So uh, let's just treat it as an even racetrack. Let's treat it as a classic match race. So uh, the, uh, the team in the right has the right. Andy? 20 seconds to go to the start. Hansen pushing Reese, Getting close as they come in towards the finish. This is the crucial race. Oh, Reese manages to tack ahead of Hansen with only 10 seconds to go. Hansen looks a little soft, a little light, and Reese looks in good shape here. Oh. There goes the gun. Looks like Jordan Reese got the best of that start. How did it look to you, Scott? He's in great shape, Andy. He is bow forward and Hansen bailing out. So Hansen certainly didn't have to follow Reese uh, back to the right on such a thin lane, but he chose to do that. Reese must have had a little more pressure just at the boat when the gun went. He accelerated, Hansen did not, so that was the first little puff on the right. So first blood to Jordan Reese. Attacking here guys in two, one, attacking. Straight yeah. through Hansen simultaneously tacks, but Jordan Reese has held on to this lead. Well done to the Australian team as they go for their hoist. Big Black Alpari, World Match Racing Tour Spinnaker. Three or four boat length lead. Now Jordan Reese right in good breeze, extending. Breeze is filled in and Reese is ahead. There's the crucial match for the place in the finals. Oh, Jordan so Reese crossing ahead of cloud beneath us, so it could be gone Hansen. by the time we get Oh, Hansen furious. Quite really safe. He's still stopped down there, but let's just extend. Copy. 
Just doesn't look good at all. Hansen now in light air. Reese in loads more breeze. Wow. Jordan Reese putting in a final jibe before they come to the finish. I can't tell you folks what an upset this is. Jordan Reese, 21 years old, has dispatched Bjorn Hansen, who won the last two events, who's leading the Alpari World Match Racing Tour. Coming down towards the finish to take this semi-final three races to two. He couldn't have made it any closer if he tried, but in this final race, boy, he has dominated. What a lead, it's a full legs lead. As they come down towards the finishing line, the blue flag says Jordan Rees takes it and is through to the finals. Congratulations to Jordan and his team. They uh, just did it better than we did uh, yesterday and today. So um, uh, good luck to them in the finals. So we have our finalists, Ian Williams and Jordan Rees. The final of the Chicago Match Cup was going to be an interesting affair with the current world champion Ian Williams coming up against the young Australian Jordan Rees. But for Williams there was to be a change in his usual crewing which could have an impact. Well, Bill Hardesty has been feeling sick uh, the last couple of days and uh, we haven't really been sure what it was, but, it, but he went to uh, ER this morning, 4 a.m. with uh, appendicitis and uh, he's having an emergency appendectomy today. So obviously he won't be sailing. We obviously wish him a, a speedy recovery from that. Uh, and we will be sailing with Garth Ellingham, uh, one of uh, Phil Robertson's crew. We've had a few days in the boats now, and, and so we all feel a little bit more settled and more confident in, in, in the boats. And that should allow us to you know, hopefully cover, you know, cover the areas that, that Bill otherwise would have been covering. Just being 20 years old and uh, first World Tour event, we're pretty stoked to go up against uh, the world number one in Williams. Uh, we haven't raced him that much. This is the first week we've actually raced him, so we're looking forward to the challenge. We're looking forward to, to racing Jordan. Uh, you know, we, we don't know much about him. We sailed him once in the round robin, uh, and we had a you know a really good race with him then. And uh, you know, it's it's, it's going to be a good final. The conditions here are really challenging today. The um, the forecast this morning didn't look so good, so um, I think this afternoon it's going to sail your own race and hopefully come away with a couple of wins. It's super important to, for us to win this, to, to win the Alpari World Match Racing Tour, you, you need to win two or three regattas a year and, and we haven't won any yet. So yeah, we'll, we, you know, we, we're keen to win this one and uh, if we can then I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll give us a good boost for the, for the overall standings. We join the teams in the pre-start of their first race. This folks is the finals. Entering Ian Williams from the starboard end, Jordan Reese from the port end. This is for all the money. On board with Ian Williams. 
Jordan Reese. He has to keep clear because he's on port. Looks Whoa. very close. Redis! Listening on board. That was a protest clearly from Ian Williams. Looked very close. The umpire's having a good think about that. Oh, oh well. A blue flag, that means it's a penalty against Jordan Reese immediately. The 21 year old young gun racing against the veteran, the wily old fox, Ian Williams. 30 seconds to go to the start. This is their final run in. Yeah, copy. Jordan Reese, a penalty against him. It's heavy pin bias, isn't it? We don't know. Wait up. He's mean. 16 seconds. That's belt here, guys. Come on, though, mate. Two. Jordan Reese happy with the pin. He thinks that's the advantage position. All the way. Coming up. We're racing, yeah. There goes the gun. The left hand side is the side Jordan Reese really wants. Williams a little light to windward. Still in a reasonably controlling position. It's Jordan Reese. Crossing ahead on poor Tack, he's got that penalty to do, and boy did he need this uh, advantage early in the race, Andy. So there it is, Reese coming around the mark, up goes the black, Alpari Spinnaker. Alpari, of course, the primary sponsor in the tour. And there's Williams tacking around right now, and it's going to be a slow manoeuvre as well. So excellent work to the young Australian. He's out to about a five boat length lead, Andy, looking good. Just going to reach out. Yeah, it's any problem we're going to have a win. Very, very, very close whether or not he has the uh, the room to do a penalty. I, I, I yeah. don't think he quite has it. We're going to set the clock on him now. Okay, so he's not hoisting. He is waiting. He's going to sail outside the two boat length circle. And then he, now he's going to tack around and do his acceleration and come back at Williams on starboard. Let's see how it goes. So there goes his penalty and down comes the umpire flag yeah driving here go hurry it up go hurry it up jib down jib down jib down yeah oh it is close but the nice dirty job, air of jordan yeah. reese's boat not quite getting area, down to right. williams williams we'll still moving. able to jibe, jibe no, away towards the good. finishing good. line this is the first race of the final ian williams yeah, coming no, down towards the finishing line. He is cool under pressure, and Williams takes it. Williams went on to secure another win, which put the pressure on Reese coming into flight three. We join the action in the pre-start. Jordan Reese, he's got to do it. He's got to do something. It's match point. Williams is looking in great shape here for Closing it out, so Jordan Reese must win this race. A little faster, let's just build at him a little, but not too much. Coming up, right. faster! Use more! More home! Come on! Flag him! Williams being very vocal with the umpires. You haven't even tacked yet! I have. What have the umpires got to say? The flag on the play, is there? There is a flag. And it's green, a green well, flag, so no penalty. Williams is really in the driving seat of this pre-start. Boy, he's done well. Used that starboard advantage. Get it all the way up. No, Reese in bad shape here. He's going to have to tack away immediately, right, Nathan? As soon as they get around the committee boat, Jordan Reese will have to tack to try and get out of that dirty air. Looks like Reese might have might have cranked up a little more on port, okay, so I'll just uh, talk you through this one. It's going to be very close indeed. They've only been racing for uh, about four and a half minutes. So here we come. It's Williams on starboard, Reese on port, and Reese has put his bow down. It is. It's a small duck by Reese. It is a duck by Reese. So he's going to get in there on speed. starboard, I think, Andy. This Close. is going to be very good. So work on speed, guys. Williams is going to go head to win. Reese is not entitled to go in there. Now Reese puts his bow yeah, down. Okay. 
but Williams has Almost to complete. Very well executed by Ian hoist, Williams. It's very close. Okay, it's very close indeed. Right. Williams is around first, but Jordan Reese only three, five feet behind him. Great work by the, by the Australian team. So you can see their two bolt length advantage gains to Ian Williams. <laughs> That's the red flag as they come towards the red mark. And we Attacking now. Let's just try and settle it. Two, one, and press. Oh, yeah, got it. Bow is on, coming down. Go hoist. Big wave here. Quite low. Attacking. Williams. Spinnaker up that Lotus Attacking Spinnaker, two or three long. lengths ahead of. Yeah, the pressure's okay this way. Jordan Reese. We'll see what Reese can do, but it really will take for Williams yeah, to park up from here. Yeah, they come down towards the finishing line. Ian Williams, Garth well Ellingham, well done, Matt Cornwall, well and Lawson. Matt Parker win 2012 Chicago Match Cup. Well done, mate. Great job. Thanks for coming along. Well done, mate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winners, the GAC Pindar team, Ian Williams. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy at all. I think uh, particularly the first two races really could have gone either way. And um, we got the little bit of luck we needed at the time and then controlled the last one. So obviously very happy to, to win for GAC Pin. Yeah, it just sounded a little bit smarter than us. Uh, we had a few little mistakes in the pre-start, which just held us up a bit. Um, from there, the guys did an awesome job staying in the races, but ultimately Ian beat us. This is a point score for us, as is Sam Maritz, and um, we're looking forward to the rest of the, the, the tour. So we have our winner of the Chicago Match Cup. Ian Williams, who had yet to win an event this year, had claimed a victory. A very proud Jordan Reese finished second, and following a petit final battle, Bjorn Hansen came third and Taylor Canfield came fourth. Williams' success here in Chicago has helped him close the gap on Bjorn Hansen on the overall tour leaderboard. But as we know, with match racing, anything can happen. So stay with us for the fifth stage of the Alpari World Match Racing Tour, the Samaritz Match Race. Super skills, his young Tekka, he is doing great stuff. But pops another penalty, that's two. Oh, Yell left him too quick. So now the race is on, Morvan has got to try and catch Williams up. Mursky clean ahead. Mursky squeezes around Hansen towards the finish. What a race, 